Well, good morning, folks, and welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be continuing the work on our generator install. We have this Kohler 20,000 watt standby generator that we're using to resupply the energy in our solar batteries when the sun isn't out, like today. For the most part, the installation has gone really good. However, it's not without its hiccups. I ended up actually having to call in the pros. Oh, maybe I shouldn't tell you that part of the story. I don't want to spoil the ending. Well, good morning again, folks. Uh, today, I'm gonna to be working out here on the generator trying to get all the outdoor connections finished. Um, I've got a major issue that I gotta deal with with this uh, big one aught cable, uh, just trying to wiggle it around. Um, I also um, got this electrical power cord uh, coming from the building, um, and that's uh, underground burial rated cable. So that'll be a little bit difficult to uh, peel back and, and uh, get inserted. But overall, nothing really too complicated. Um, anyway, I'll get to it. One thing we might have questions about is the black large diameter wire that I'm using to carry the generator's power into the power shed. The reason for that size of wire is that the generator's breaker is 100 amps. Breakers are sized to protect the wire from overheating, melting, and starting a fire. So I have to have wire that can safely conduct that 100 amp potential. There are several options we could use with copper or aluminum cable, and I'm going with a wire that is one aught aluminum and direct burial rated for my solution. Close are you to being? Oh well, I'm almost done out here. But then I gotta go inside. Okay. I've got a lot of work inside to do. So this is a three-day project. Yeah, at least. At least. If I don't drag it out, then mom won't give me credit for. <laughs> you know, this is this is a time and materials job. Yes. <laughs> These are the two that allow the solar system brains to tell the generator to start up and shut down. Your frontal lobe to communicate with the occipital lobe. Is that what that is? Man, I can't, I know it's still kind of cold outside, but seeing you do this like with little wires and stuff and metal this would just be so cold on the hands and this would be brutal wouldn't it if, uh, if it wasn't at least if it wasn't so mild today yeah and yesterday so the next thing that i'm going to do here is i'm going to take the uh, electrical panel apart and I'm going to add this gray cable that runs out to the generator um, and add a new circuit for that. What do you think, Landon? Can you help me? Yeah. Okay. So Karen and I are out here in the power shed today. We've gotten down to the point where um, we have wires coming in from the generator outside 
we fed them through that conduit and up into our power box. Um, but we need to get them interconnected. And in order to do that, we really need to take the entire system offline so that there's no energy, no power uh, to any of the connections that are inside this box. Um, there's just a ton of wires in here and it would be so easy uh, to touch the wrong thing or short something. So we are going to completely take the system down, which means that we're going to lose our lights in here. Um, and uh, we're actually the only people here um, on the property right now. Uh, the kids and grandkids have gone um, today on a material run. But um, this gives us an opportunity to shut everything down. But we do have to deal with lights. So we're going to pull one of our backup generators out, um, get some temporary lights um, run. And uh, then we'll be ready to start shutting this thing down, uh, turning power off from batteries, turning power off from the solar panels, um, and just, uh, yeah. Make it safe. Make it safe. We got our backup generator going out here. Just need to get it plugged in. I also need to go around to the side of the building here. I need to shut down all of the feeds coming from the solar panels into the charge controllers. Next in the shutdown sequence, I need to go up and I need to actually turn off all of the batteries. I think I could actually disconnect the system from the batteries. And then up on each battery, there's a, actually a power switch. All right, now before I go sticking my hands in there, I'm gonna take my meter uh, and actually just double check, make sure that everything is dead. Is it safe? It is safe. All right. All right, next thing we'll do, we're gonna run these wires back through the case and get them over onto this side of the panel. After threading the cables over to the right side of the panel, I tied the green wire to the system ground bar and the white wire to the neutral bar on the AC side of the system. Then I connected the black and red wires, the two hot legs, to the double pole circuit breaker for this connect switch. I actually have a second route for power coming in from the outside of the building, so I added a breaker switch for that source as well. I started reinstalling the covers on the right-hand distribution side of the power box and did the final connections for the generator power into the inverter. Once that's done, all the covers go on and we're ready to reactivate the system. One final task of connecting the signal wire that allows the solar system to tell the generator to start up and shut down, and we're done. All right, so. Batteries are the first thing you turn back on? This will allow the system electronics to start up. Start power on the DC bus. All 
that did is actually allow electricity flow from the battery into that big junction box and down here to this breaker right here. I'm going to turn that breaker on. Okay. Now, the battery is actually powering up the XW Pro. And you can see the battery monitor and the CP and AGS. Oh. All those guys have started up now. They came alive. The next thing I'm going to do is go turn the breakers on for the charge control. Yeah. crappy day. Might be getting 0.5 or 0.3. Okay, so I guess power coming into here, but we've got to put those guys on it. Now they'll all boot up. Have light again. Well, we've got the generator all hooked up. So we're going to go ahead and start through the uh, commissioning process. One of the first things I need to do is just uh, double check, make sure that uh, I don't have any leaks in this gas line that comes around. So I'm going to turn the, uh, the valve on and then I'm going to shoot it with soapy water. see any leaks so that's a good sign we'll go ahead and uh, hook up power now all right what's our pre-start checklist air, air cleaner so check the air cleaner it's brand new so obviously it should be say, immaculate brand new. Oh yeah, it's an air cleaner. It's immaculate. It's perfect. Okay, what's the next thing we have to check? Air inlets. Air inlets. Okay, that just means that uh, we don't have anything over here on this side that's blocking any of our air inlets. <laughs> and we don't. Uh, battery. Check for tight battery connections. Consult the battery manufacturer instructions regarding battery care and maintenance. Okay, I'm not taking the uh, cover back off to prove that they're tight. I just put them on yesterday so that I'm sure they're tight. All right, exhaust system. Okay. Check for Check. exhaust. You can see there's no leaks or no blockages or anything like that. Okay. No. What's the next? Okay. Exhaust system. Oil. Oh, Oil who needs to check that? <laughs> All right, so it's a dipstick right there. I got this out, and it's right there. Okay. So, yep, that's at the top of the range. Operating area check for obstructions that could block the flow of cooling air. Keep the air intake area clean. Do not leave rags, tools, debris on or near the generator. Press the run button to immediately start the generator. Press the off button. Generator stops. Alright, so what do we got? We're in auto mode. Next exercise is the 10th of January, and I think if we just hit the start button. There's air in the, in the gas 
last time probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just needs time. <coughs> it'll pause and it'll try again. Well, I'd like to say that the generator started right up and ran as expected. However, that wasn't the case. It just cranked and cranked and cranked. So I gave the dealer a call and he gave me a list of things to check. Things like, was the dead man switch off? Was the automatic choke moving the throttle as expected? Was the propane gas turned on? None of the suggestions resolved the problems. I finally called in the experts and uh, Jason came out and uh, within three minutes he had this thing running. Um, turns out it was just um, right down here, there's a voltage or a demand regulator uh, that had um, air pockets stuck in there and he uh, released that thing, started right up. So, uh, hey, appreciate those guys. Um, and uh, man, I recommend uh, uh, Jamie Neer and his associates. Um, Energy Service Solutions. Energy service solutions. Yeah, thanks guys. All right, so after all that drama, here is the sound of sweet success. <laughs> So that's the story of our generator install. Um, it's working great and uh, man, we really appreciate having that thing. Well, that's where I think we're going to leave you for this episode. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next episode.